Well, we did ask for an interview with the disability minister. He wasn't available. We're joined now by his Labour shadow, Debbie Abrahams, the Conservative peer and Paralympic champion, Lord Holmes, as well as Jackie Edinici Williams, who we saw in the film, and Gary Borley, who was also featured. Jackie, it's quite clear that you, your campaign, as far as you're concerned, one key element is mobility. Yes. It, it, it has to be the access to get around to everywhere and get into places and see things and be spontaneous and be a young person and go to places that I want to go to. That incredible story of the, the, the young woman who wants to go to university not being able even to be provided with a room to which there was access. Yeah, I think that is absolutely ridiculous because... Has it ever happened to you? Um, it has. I actually went to university um, and I did uh, music production business. Um, and at first, to get into the music studio, it wasn't accessible. So I am a very determined person. So I made sure that they put everything in place so that I could get the education mm. I wanted. And why should I be stopped from getting the education that I want? Gary, you're about learning disabilities. Yes. And what do you think should be done? I think we need to, to get together and um, that's what we need to do. Uh, um, we need to get together with other disability groups mm -hmm. and we need to get together with parents and carers of disabled people and... In people... order in part to try and educate people about what is actually required? Um, educate uh, to, and to campaign for better conditions, better rights. Hmm. That's what we need to do. Well, Chris Holmes, you were a Paralympic gold medalist. You, you, you became blind at 14, and so, as you said to me before the programme, you were able to build pictures, even now, of what we're actually looking at. But I'm <clears throat> wondering <clears throat> why, as a politician, you don't think, since the Paralympics, much, much more has been done to respond to public awareness of disability needs. I, I was lucky enough to be the director of the Paralympic Games at London 2012, and I knew if we got it right, we wouldn't just have a sensational summer of sport in 2012, but we would be able to have an impact on attitudes towards and opportunities for disabled people. We did, but as you rightly say, it's a journey and it's got a whole long way to go. Last week, I was pleased working with the Transport Minister and the Minister of Disabled People that we got Section 165 of the Equality Act to be enacted, which enables disabled people, wheelchair users, to have access to taxis. But that's been on the statute book for over 20 but years. But let me just pick up something that, that, that Jackie said. I mean, surely it should be illegal for a public institution of any description to have resources that are not uh, disability accessible. We're the fifth richest economy on the planet. There should be a presumption on access all areas. Education enabled me to achieve social mobility. I went to a 15th century college and they were able to make much of it accessible. If they can do it, it's possible for all institutions to have that attitude, that sense of we absolutely make this inclusion mm as part of what we do, not an added extra, not a burden, but to enable all talent from all backgrounds to be unleashed. Right. Uh, Debbie Abrahams, I mean, Labour had a chance, um, but really, to be honest, the landscape is still totally inadequate. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, I recognise that it's now 21 years, I think it is, since the Disability Discrimination <clears throat> Act, and there has been a, a considerable improvement. But as Jackie said, as Gary has said, we've got a long way to go, and it's becoming more and more difficult for disabled people. So with the, the, the latest Welfare Reform and Work Act now, mm. um, the, the cuts to disabled people make it harder and harder for them to participate in, in everyday life. The, the PIP uh, cuts as, as, as well are really affecting even our elite athletes, as a, a young woman in Greater Manchester, Carly Tate, um, who's being prevented, she's had her wheelchair, uh, sorry, her mobility component of her, uh, of her DLA uh, stopped, and she's finding it difficult to, to train for her, for well, her I, wheelchair. I'm wondering, what do you think of the politicians? You've got one from <laughs> each of the major, major par parties here. Do, no you, <laughs> do you sense that they are on your side, or do you think basically they, they gas a lot but don't do much? I think it's a bit of both. I think they, people have good intentions, um, but actually doing something about it, I think that's where the issue might be, rather than... I think it's <clears> all 
great that we will talk about it and the people behind everything, but things need to happen sooner than later. Mm. And I don't want to get to 101 and still be talking about the same issues. Well, you see, for example, Chris Holmes, um, you had the uh, employment support um, mechanism uh, which came up before the Lords, and you, you actually voted in favour of the cuts. Surely you must have felt somewhat conflicted. A difficult decision, but playing a bigger game and looking what I've done in terms of my record, if you look at uh, the work I did at the Disability Rights Commission... You, you mean I'll go along with this this time, but they better watch out? Well, if, if you look at the way the result went in the Lords, you see there was more at play than just that specific vote. And if you take issues such as getting the taxi regulations passed, taking the case to the Supreme Court of Doug Pawley in terms of access to transport, involved in many of the landmark cases at the Disability Rights Commission, I'd say to anybody, judge me on my record and you'll see that from the get-go I've been about enabling opportunity and pushing well, that sense. It's about participation, it's about enabling people and it starts with education running through into employment well, and well, all, all across society. Gary, there have been cuts in disability benefits, severe yeah. cuts, yes. and, and there have been cuts in employment support. Um, yeah. it, how does that strike you? I think that there's a lot of angry disabled people out there seeing their benefits cut. I've got friends that have had their benefits being cut um, not given the time to do anything about it. Mm. And they've... And I feel... Very, I forget emotional about this because they, they are my friends mm. out there and there are lots of dis people with disabilities having to see their uh, benefits being cut and ending up with no money and then ending... to go to, to have an assessment of which can be um, demoralising. I think, Chris Holmes, you can feel his emotion. Mm. Um, Gary's very upset about this. I mean, what sort of comfort can you bring him when, to be honest, there have been swinging cuts uh, in this last uh, 12 months? I think it's been a very difficult time and I made a decision that was very difficult. I can understand people's concerns. I believed in a bigger picture and understanding what was at stake. But alongside all of this, what we really need to push is that sense of the right to work. <clears throat> the, the benefits is incredibly important. The, the welfare is an important element. But this sense of enabling everybody across the mm. country to understand this sense of a right to work, rather than the presumption that some disabled people just won't work, that's not acceptable right. at all. And if you look at the mm. disability employment gap, half disabled people of working age don't work compared to four-fifths of non-disabled people. Uh, let, let me pause you there for a moment, because, Jackie, here we have the big picture being presented, but, you know, wait for it and we'll get there, kind of. That seems to be the message today. I mean, there are, there are no promises you could make if you, if you were to get into, in, into power. Well, what we do want to do is make sure that we're developing policy with disabled people and their carers, as, as Gary has, has said. So our Disability Equality Roadshow is doing just that. We are proud that in 2009 Labour signed up to the UN Convention for the Rights of Persons with Disability, which includes having a full access and participation in sport and leisure and recreation, mm. being full members of society right. needs well, leadership, uh, and that is not here from this government. Well, well, Jackie, you heard Debbie mention the Disability Act yeah. of 21 years ago. What do you want in the next Disability Act, and if it's to be brought now? If it was to be written today, I think it's just everybody wants access to have the access to live their lives the way they want to live their lives. If you think back to when you guys were a little bit younger, no offence, um, like, being young and being disabled is... Over, being young is already hard. Being young and disabled, mm -hmm. that's just extra pressure that... It, it shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. especially now with all the technology, everything that can be done. Governments should just work together and talk to the people that put them in power. Well, that is a good note to end on. Uh, it doesn't end our commitment to No Go Britain. We'll be revisiting this very much this week and in 2016. Thank you all very much for coming in.